I'd like to introduce you to Awesome Sense. Our mission is to uncover what makes your child tick. The problem space that we focused on is that people with autism have a difficult time communicating. That could be verbal or nonverbal communication. This can cause frustration for them, especially when they're doing some activities that we might take for granted, but is um, difficult for them, such as using technology. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, using technology and doing online searching, for example. Our solutions are a series of different applications and prototypes that focus on monitoring the child's emotional state and providing analytics and reporting on that for teachers and parents. We also want to look at some technology solutions and how do you design those to better meet the needs of these unique kids, such as Jimmy. He's our persona for our presentation. He'd be around 5 to 12 years old. The ecosystem that we've designed has a couple of components. One is a wristband that Jimmy would wear that would monitor his stress levels and then data, um, collect all that data, provide reporting on it. Then apps could plug into our platform and provide unique experiences for Jimmy. We prototyped a search interface, but you could also imagine this being a real world object like maybe a, a teddy bear that interacts with him. So we'll explain this more as we go through the demos. And um, we're going to start that right now. All right. Thank you. Um, all right. So I'm Jimmy's dad. And I, I learned this weekend from doctors that he has problems using the keyboard maybe to do Bing search. So the problem is, you know, web search in general can be difficult for people and especially for kids with autism. Um, how can we help them uh, bring it without a keyboard? And I'm going to show a demo of that, a live demo. So, what I do is, I give him a list of keywords in an Excel file, which I want him to search on more and learn more about. And uh, then I build this application, which has the different search widgets in it. And he goes in, he wants to read more about Dora, he, he clicks it. If, I, if you had a surface, you could touch it, and he sees results about Dora from Bing. Um, he wants to see images of Mickey Mouse. He goes in and these are live uh, images of Mickey Mouse that Bing gives out. He wants to uh, see videos about Scooby-Doo. He goes in, clicks that, and he sees the list of videos and he can play them here, interact with them. So that's um, so that way, what we have, uh, what we've accomplished is it's a guided search. So you're helping him search through words that you want him to learn more about. It's kind of a parental control, so you don't, you don't want to have the whole web going in, and you want to have also the uh, you can also monitor the kids' activities while he's doing it. So I'm Jimmy, and this is my wristband, <coughs> and right now this is my teacher's phone, and so my teacher is going to connect to my wristband, and it should start receiving data. And it would be, yeah, it would, yeah, it would go into the Dropbox, and you would see a feed, and then um, we'll have basically uh, a monitoring of all the activity. So it will give a bunch of numbers that we go, go, that we send to Dropbox, and then we get the data, we mine it, and we give a trend line of how he's doing over the past few days, what are his stress levels like, uh, what are his emotion levels like, and finally. We also correlated with the activities he was doing. So if he was playing soccer, he had a lower stress level. Maybe he was uh, doing some cleaning work, which had a higher stress level. And then um, we also have kind of a map for the parents to see what activities made him uh, high stress. Maybe playing with the dog was a stressful activity for him. And he, uh, we showed the numbers for those. This is actually showing the real-time data. So for example, if I hold my breath, you should see the, you see the level of stress start to increase. And um, when he goes out of range, we get an SMS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to go out of range if now. If he goes out of the building, on. I know that I lost you. So, um, <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, so since time
time is up, I just want to say, you know, there, there's something cool about what the one statement you said is find out what your what makes your child tick. Yeah. That that is massive in in in, uh, in uh, the spectrum of autism, especially at the at the uh, the severe end of the spectrum. Um, you know, once you figure out what makes your or actually in, in all areas of the spectrum, generally speaking, I mean, once you figure out what makes them tick, you can then start to unlock you know ways to communicate with them. And so that part was interesting. I guess where I lost you was the beginning. The search part seemed completely disjointed from the end part. So that was activity example that uh, of how do you help kids do an activity, and then you monitor while they're doing the activity. You you, you have the monitor hooked up and see how to respond to different keywords. I feel like you have something really good with the with the wristband and the stress thing. I, I feel like there's something really good there, and 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 that's where this thing should focus. But it's it's yeah, yeah that's what I thought. See, library does a does a core piece that we want to turn into a platform. Yeah. So for example, uh, if, I mean, we want to make this open so that other people can develop apps on top of it and use yeah. it to integrate into their R and D and feedback as well. Very cool. And it, of course, adjust the settings. That search is an R&D So that's yeah. an application that uses the data from the real time. Yeah. So the, the data was coined. Yeah. 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 Yeah.